Okay, guys, doing a macro update. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks. I also want to hit on a little bit of what we did today in Inner Circle, day trade wise, equities, um, a little bit of teaching on working a five minute cycle. And then I did a little review of what we had going on in the Cyclage Pro, went 40 for 44 August and September. It's been a good run. Had some really good global macro calls, and I'll hit on a little bit of that in conjunction with having a new website that we've put together. So it's just cleaning things up, trying to make things better. So this is the latest version. Um, I also I wanted to condense some of the newsletter analysis that we that I've done before. I kind of had an institutional node. I had Cycledge Pro. I had some crypto stuff. I'm just putting it all together into one newsletter now uh, i'm going to use beehive so i'm kind of moving some of that over from substack um but anyway that's new exciting and then also the algo service now it's been my goal for a while to kind of automate more of the model on different time frames so this service is gonna combine what i used to do in the cycle edge pro where we do so many manual um signals and that's what i just reviewed here for myself in the group but going back through august i mean it's mostly been short equities um short equities been short the long end of treasuries tens and bonds sprinkled in a little bit of long dollar so short cable been short euro uh was a little bit long gold and oil for a little bit of this reflation trade that happened last month since then, dollar's been too strong. Rates have been rising too much. We've been bearish on gold, um, covering copper. But I went through all these, so I don't need to spend time. I mean, it's, it's a lot of signals. So we were out of the money on twos. I think we had one trade. I just counted that as a loss. Um, missed on Nikkei long. But all overall, I mean, 90 90 percent win rate so i'm moving this into the algo service i'll hit on at the end of the after i do the macro update but i mean you guys are in the group you know you've just been stroking it so that's just part of having the process using the model um different time frames putting it all together so i think we're at the end of this rates move so a lot of this stuff i mean we've been just going to the short side tens and bonds and long dollar quite a bit and i think this trade has been a little bit too easy it's i think it's getting towards the end of its move um but let's just get into that so uh long bonds let's just start with the dollar dollar has been absolutely screaming now when you look when you have these big picture pivots so the beginning half of this year was stampede into the ai narrative right so equities kind of took off in the spring by may it was pretty obvious and pretty good head fake with the dollar it was a little bit easier to see in the euro and the pound because it failed up at pi which was our call that we had shorting sterling was that was the best fx move we had this year but this was the false breakdown here in july it kind of probably threw people off. He thought maybe you get to move to the 200 or for full pie cycle. And then we did a bullish 180, reverse that. Um, so if you were looking at just the dollar index, that that was a little bit trickier. But when you went to things like euro, we failed right at pie. So I teach this all the time. We don't, we don't get caught up in these head fakes when you're below the 200, above the 200. Now you're bullish. No, this was a simple pi cycle away and then all the way back to it this was the start of this last move down and it's a little bit obvious this break here we're oversold on euro wouldn't be surprised if you get a move back toward the eight or a little bit of oversold relieving rebound but still core short euro you can see it on the pound also sterling's been even weaker so we went right into pi failed Everything that they have going on from a fundamental perspective with UK guilt, all that's still in place. Their real estate market's a disaster. Europe 
still more bearish on the eurozone versus the U.S. economy. So that's been a hell of a trade. Now, again, I think the easy money on the short side's over. I think you're going to have to probably deal with a little bit of a bounce back. And I actually told my guys to take a little bit of a long on Euro Swissy here in front of Pi to kind of balance that Euro short, Euro short out. So if we get that move back up, uh, Swissy, Swissy should do fine. It's kind of really all I wanted to hit on. I guess maybe the yen. Uh, back to this is the futures chart. This has been a nice short all year. Been we've been on the short side of this. Now you're getting back to levels where you had big reversals. If you look at the cash, one fifty. So I'm kind of thinking that this yen trade's about done. Doesn't mean I necessarily want to get um, bullish on the yen. I just haven't been aggressive shorting it or signaling to short it. So that's kind of what I care about in FX. And then this will do equities next. Talked about coming into the back half of the year. The probability is that you're going to get a risk off trade is higher. So we're kind of waiting for the momentum to fizzle out. And that's what we had. So we did a good job with shorts in here when we broke this swing line, this the TMS, you cracked the eight. This was your first leg down into pie, or excuse me, into the bands. Not, not surprised we had a bounce to about a 618 retrace of this move. All right, and then this is the second leg we've been experiencing. And I mean, this was major, major. We break that. That's why you got the VIX pushing up towards 20 now. This is this is all bearish. All right. We've been short, core short. Even more bearish on the Russell. Thought that we couldn't hold pi. Same thing. You're going to retest these lows earlier in the year and then maybe even make a run and get last year's lows. Back to SP. When you when you take out, this is typical in the model. I've been teaching this for forever, years and years and years and years. You can't hold the TMS. This was the last major higher low. If you went to the weekly chart, it's even more obvious. Couldn't hold these higher lows. This is trouble, not holding the bands. By the time you get that, the next move in the model is all the way back to the 200 and or a full pie cycle. So I still think that that's in play. I talked about 4,300 puts a couple weeks ago. Now I think I have some puts down at 4,200. Um, so that's kind of the risk off cycle that we're in. As far as equities, you don't have to overcomplicate it more than that. NASDAQ, um, it's trying to hold on. So NASDAQ's kind of let us up. AI, things like NVIDIA. Tesla really still hasn't broke. Apple and some of the others have broken these lows. Um, but we're just barely hanging on. So I still think the next move is back to the 200 for NASDAQ also. So we want to stay core short equities. And again, being long the dollar and being long volatility is not, not much to be long when you have equities in risk off and you have Treasury's getting smoked. So let's do those next. Um, this has just been an, a massive move, but it was actually kind of obvious. Once we broke this wedge, we had a couple chances to reshort, reset shorts. The first move down, second move, second and third legs are usually bigger. So I don't really have, you got to go to the yield charts, kind of see what's next. I don't think you need to be in a hurry to pick a bottom here. But at some point, we've been saying that the yield curve is about as flat as it can get. When it was back twos, tens down, it give 100 basis points. If you wanted to be long treasuries, being long twos has been the place to be. Because we're at the end of this rate hike cycle. The market's looking through, is it one more, is it not one more? But meanwhile, when you have oil, get to oil next, rallying basically 50% off of a pie cycle down around 63, 65, where we were getting bullish, that's just too, too much of an inflation. So the Fed, of course, comes out, starts talking like 
<laughs> like they've uh, they've they've uh, solved that problem. Meanwhile, oil has done nothing but rally. So they're already in the rearview mirror again. You're going to have inflation. The bond markets, the long end of the bond market's been pricing that in. Now we're going to have to start dealing with growth. When you have equities going down like they have been, vols picking back up, dollars strong. We're getting probably close to a low in the bond market. So the way I've been playing it, we covered up most of our core short and tens, covered most of our 30 year short, and just hanging out long twos for a while, which have been out of the money. We've had a couple good pops when the yield curve steepened here um, earlier in the year. I think you're probably going to have another move similar to that where twos are going to go start going the other way. Um, again, the, Fed, the bond market's going to start, start to price in growth more than inflation. And I don't really see that changing unless oil gets like above 100. So this is the low as I was talking about. Pi was down here. We like the market. We like the oil. And then we're back to these levels late last year, third, third quarter, fourth quarter, the market struggled that. So unless, unless you get oil above 100 on the margin here, I think the bond market's going to start pricing growth as opposed to this, this, re, this reacceleration and in inflation, which is, I mean, that's, that's drug the uh, long end down. So I'd rather go to the long side in twos or even fives. I did I did take a small long on ultras yesterday, which I think was like a 117. And now we're three points lower. I'm gonna give it one more one more lot on the long side, maybe if we puke a little bit further into the end of the week. But that's against my again, my short tens and my short thirties, which we've been pretty aggressive on selling rallies. So I'm fine with being long twos, kind of like a butterfly, maybe out the curve on ultras. Um, if you didn't want to buy ultras, maybe you could you could get a little bit long 30s, but that's probably still early. We need to get above the eight here. You've got to you've got to get the hourly and intermediate term to turn back up. So that's still early. Um but I think that makes sense especially if you're trading in other parts of the curve short. Oh, what else am I missing? Kind of touched on oil. You can look at oil a little bit more near term. Bought some calls today at 90 just to have a little bit of exposure. I don't, if we can't hold here, next move is probably back to mid 80s. Maybe the August highs, the, the bands down here. I think that's still a long, uh, oil is still, still bullish. Um, but again, we're getting back to levels where the economy and demands going to, you just can't take oil from 65 to almost a hundred without it causing problems in the economy. And the same thing with rates absolutely exploding. You can get into what 8% on 30 year mortgages. It's just it's not good for growth at all. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that gold. Pretty technical, had this wedge that we talked about coming into this month. You can't have strong dollar and rates rising and gold being bullish. So that finally gave way, broke the 200. You broke this higher low and get to move back to pi. I'll entertain a little bit of a core long at 1800. It's just not a rip roaring long at all. Um, it's fine to have a little bit in the portfolio. See what happens at these lows. And then on the other side of that, we've liked being short copper for forever. That's a play on growth. That's a play on the metals. That's a that's a kind of a hedge against the gold market. And uh, it's also a play on China's growth slowing. So there's been lots of spots to sell in here. I covered earlier in the week. I'd be a seller again, 360, 370, anything up at these levels makes sense. Uh, I think that's it. Maybe just day trade what we did today. This is pretty straightforward. We came in, that market broke down early, pretty clear downtrend. This was a nice cycle, five minute cycle. 
here in front of Jolts, we took this short. We had pie above the market. This is just a great edge. This is the wall concept. My guys know right there. Boom, short. You added to it. And then there was another good cycle here. But there were some other places to be a little bit more short on the one minute. So that was, I think we did like five grand today. A couple of my guys did a little bit, two grand easy off the open. That was a good trade. And then we talked about, we talked about this five minute cycle. There's ways to sit through that, but what you're trying to do is catch the right hand side of what we call the, the cycle. So you're trying to sell here. Sometimes you get a little bit stretched on the way up. So there's ways to hedge that in our pairs trading. So we play a little bit of NASDAQ long into the cycle top. And then you start to fade that in S&P, your long little bit of NASDAQ. And then when that starts to roll over, you can just get out of your hedge and you just add more to the short side. So really kind of an easy morning as far as that goes. Um, what did we do today there? Let me clean this up. Sorry, one sec. I don't know if my guys posted their trades. Uh, yeah, twelve hundred bucks short S and P. A little bit of a long Nasdaq. Eight hundred bucks, beautiful. Playing both sides. Still core short Russell, but. Being short both bonds and equities. That's that's good trading. It's just and this is what we're going on going going over with the swing line. So we do that in the inner circle. And here is the bot or the algo stuff that we're doing. This is core short on 30s, was covering today. This has been absolutely on fire. Um just riding these core shorts. I think you have 100% winners on just the four hour chart. So this is all I've been automating this and using this um, to go alongside your core trading and your manual trading. So I, I can help you guys with this algo service. If you go to cycleedgecapital.com, click here on the algo product. And my goal was just now with all the AI bots and chats and the way they write code, it's easy for us to get this on your chart. So as part of this service, um, working, I want to work with thirty, the next 30 people on the team, on the algo team, to help you get these on your charts. So you can start to put some of these, these bots or the algo the signaling into your charts on different time frames. So there's day trade. You can use it for your day trade stuff. Intermediate term, the core stuff, you can use it for some of your core trades, your swing trades. And then the longer term is great for investing too. I mean, you can put, you can put, you can get long NASDAQ or different, different AI ETFs and just, hey, what's the model running for the next six months? So that's my goal. I can help you get that in on your charts. Um, I can also help you if you want to set up set it up in your own broker. There's a, there's different signal providers that do that now, and you can actually get it to set up to automatically trade. And there's tons of brokers now that do that. And then we're going to be doing a little bit more on the FX side also. Um, but I just highlighted what we were doing on like Ethereum shorts, 86% winners. What the model's been running on the Russell, which was a big winner in the last two months. 79% win rate just on RTY and the core stuff. Um, here's the here's what we're doing in treasuries. This is long two-year notes. Even though the market's been down long twos, you still came out profitable. Like two grand on just one contract, which you don't trade twos with just one contract, but that's just this, the way the signal's set up. And then you can change that too, of course. And then this is the, the short side of 30s, so 15 grand. So it's kind of rare to be directional and make money on both sides, but 
that's kind of how we work the model over the years. And that's kind of what you're paying for is all that experience and putting it all together. This is what I really like even more being short um, S and P and then running long on NASDAQ five minute. So you catching the short squeezes on the long side in NASDAQ and then getting out of the way and then getting back on the short side in equities and in S and P. So the 2,800 bucks on the short side, Oh, sorry. Short NASDAQ, long S&P. Same thing. We just like being more core short overall. So NASDAQ gives you more beta. So short, long S&P, 2,800, um, 7,300 bucks NASDAQ. Again, that's just simply running, keeping it simple on one contract. But anyway, guys, the next 30 people I wanted to offer this to, like really cheap. It's going to be about a hundred bucks a month service. That's what I had the cycle edge pro at for years without any of the software or using the AI to tighten up the code for your own charts. 600 bucks for the years is still awesome. Awesome price. But then I just wanted to do something crazy for the next 30 people, 150 bucks. So that's just for the whole year, 150 bucks. I, I can't work with, a ton of people because I want to make sure you get set up in the charts and everything. It's a little bit more one-on-one -on -one and hand-holding. So we'll have that going in the Discord. Um, yeah, and I'll just jump on that. Cycleedge.com uh, Cycleedgecapital.com Just hit the algo and get you guys squared away. If you have any other questions, the contacts page on the website should be working also. You can reach out to me that way. All right, guys, good start to the week. I think we're going to finish more risk off here into um, pretty heavy risk off environment to start October. So we'll see how we finish the week, but hope that helps. I'll see some of you in the morning.